Yeah, I hope I didn't lure too many of you here with that title. Um, it's not going to be that much Haskell, it's going to be very little Haskell, but my, my, my overall goal is to show you how, how, how the whole process basically works, how you end up at some application you can install on your phone that at least calls a tiny bit of Haskell. Um, initially, I had a l much larger program, but that would probably have turned into like three, two to three hour talk, and that's just way too much. So um, m m maybe the next time when we have all the setup done and stuff, then we can talk more about details of programs. Um, okay, so let's start building Android apps with Haskell. Um, this slide, most of you know, right? That's me. You can follow me if you want. Um, uh, okay, so what, what do we need to do uh, to, to basically compile applications to your phone? Um, you basically need LLVM 5 right now. You can take 501, which is, has been released recently, and I think it would all, probably also work with LLVM 6 once that's released. Um, you need the Haskell cross compilers. I provide these binary distributions, so you can basically just download them and use them. Um, and you need the toolchain wrappers. We'll come to that a bit later. And obviously, you need Android Studio if you want to basically install it on your phone. Or maybe you can't even do it on your own if you're really hardcore and want to do that, but um, I wouldn't advise that. And if you want to use Cabal, you need a really recent Cabal. Um, there's still some bugs in there, and I'll, I'll talk about that shortly, but um, for what I'm going to show, we're just going to use GHC. So there's no, no build system involved, except for a make file. If you look at the source code, I post it online. Okay, so installing LLVM is pretty simple, and installing the uh, cross compilers is similarly simple. But right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you base <laughs> what what you basically want to do is you download those, and um, these cross compilers I provide are relocatable, which means you can basically just move your GSC folder around as you like. Um, you don't need to install them anymore. So what you do, and there's something which I'm probably going to fix soon is um, they don't extract into a folder. So they basically instruct, extract where you are. So you might want to create a folder first and instruct them into the folder. Otherwise, you just just spatters everywhere. Um, and obviously, you want you want to add the binary the the bin bin paths in each of those folders to your path. So you have them available. If you don't want to use the 64-bit uh, Android, you don't need that. If you don't want to use the simulator, you don't need this. So depending which one you want, you basically just substitute or remove. Um, and if you want to do iOS, it's basically the same procedure. It's just like different names. Um, okay, um, then we have toolchain wrappers. So because the toolchains across Android and Raspberry Pi and uh, iOS are all kind of different, and I prefer to have a somewhat unique, uh, uni uh, unified interface overall, um, there's this tool, uh, toolchain wrappers repository, which you can basically just clone and um, there's one wrapper file, and if you run Bootstrap, it generates quite a few symlinks to that wrapper file, and the wrapper file will basically pick up which thing it has to do based on the name that's uh, based on the file name that is being called. Um, and for Android, you basically need to um, edit the Android toolchain config or Linux Android toolchain config if you're Linux, um, and make uh, and basically put in the path where your Android NDK is. Because you could have that anywhere on your system, and I don't know where it is, so you kind of need to specify that. Also, which uh, API version you want to use. But I think it's the first two lines of that file, so it shouldn't be that complicated to fix. Um, okay, so about the application. We're going to create an application in Android Studio. We create a really small, tiny Haskell uh, library. Um, and then we, uh, I'll show you how to link the Haskell library with the application. Um, and then I, I show you how that trivial code actually looks like. So, has anyone ever built an, Hask uh, an Android app using Android Studio? Okay, two. The other isn't. Okay. So if, if you have this Android Studio and say you want a new project, this is the first screen you see. Basically, type in some name and it gives you location. Um, you should tick the include C++ support. Even though we're not doing C++, it basically helps with the bootstrap process because you obviously want the, um, the, the NDK and GNI glue already there and write it all by uh, all, all from scratch. Oh wait, that was too far, right? Yes. Okay. Um, next screen, basically the same. This is the just the second screen, so you can basically just click next. Nothing to really worry about there. Um, um, yeah. Select the empty activity, or you can choose whatever you want, depending on how you want to structure your application. So it's it's pretty pretty simple. Um, give that some name and. 
Uh, yeah, that's basically. It. So this is what the app then looks like. It's pretty amazing, right? It's like great app. Come comes basically that way once you did it just as, as I sh showed. Um, why do I always tap twice? Okay. So here's our great uh, Haskell library. Um, you, you'll need the foreign function interface because obviously we want to call it from from say somehow because what what we essentially do is we have our Kotlin code which calls C and then this small C wrapper is basically the 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 C part does the GNI glue and the GNI glue calls Haskell. So um, we have this really small function that basically just takes a Haskell string, turns it into a C string, and returns it. And um, then we have the foreign function uh, decorator for it, so we can call uh, hs underscore Haskell and basically get that function executed. And that's all our library does. It's amazing. I know. But um, it should get the point across. I hope. So building that then is um, so you have these um, triple prefix GHC in your part now. Um, and you want to add the F, uh, the LLVM ng uh, backend um, and static lib. Static lib basically turns what you compile into one one giant library. So it it has all the dependency rolled into one archive. And uh, for Android, you need need the um, position independent code flag as well. And then you basically tell it where to go. So um, I usually create like uh, some HS libs folder and then have my 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 uh, architecture, which I'm compiling for, this is the simulator, obviously, but it could also be uh, ARM V7 minus V, I don't know, something A, um, and then the library name, and you really want to make sure that you have the ODR H idea, because otherwise, if you're building with different compilers, you're going to override your objects and your uh, your, your your interface files, and that's really not what you want. Um, and then this is the pastor library and Voila, that basically builds the library. And you can do that for, for, for the simulator and then for, for the ARM, 32-bit uh, ARM and 64-bit ARM. And uh, then you already have three libraries and can basically use them all. So next, um, you need to adjust the Gradle file because by default, it assumes that you want to have all ABIs and we don't have MIPS and other support yet. So you basically want to say, this, this is basically the added three lines. The three. There's nothing more. It's just that you need the three, otherwise you have Gradle complaining, and I find the error messages in Android Studio rather confusing. And it, this basically tells which um, which ABIs you want. So if you only want to do the simulator, you can basically just leave the last two out and um, have the first one, and then it will. You will only need the simulator uh, library to link against. Um, and. Uh, the CMake file, which you will find in your Android Studio for the uh, for for the C++ project, needs to be um, adjusted a bit. So, what it basically is already there is the first line, the second line, um, and part of the last line. So, you really want to find your 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 Haskell library, right? And important part is you give it the no CMake find root path because otherwise it just won't find your library. So that's quite some time to spend there. And as, as you see, I have the HS libs file, um, folder. So if, if you have a different path, just choose a different path. And um, the, the ABI at the end is, will basically in, instantiate if it's like um, the simulator, it puts in uh, x86.64. Uh, and if it's ARM, it puts in the ARM ABI. And that's so um, it would pick the, the right library on, on uh, demand. And you need uh, libc, and I think you need that lib as well. So. Might even work without. I might have copied that over. Um, so GNI glue. This is what the GNI file looks like. Who has looked at as this Java native interface stuff? Never. Okay. So it basically generates some rather long file uh, uh, function name. This this one. So we basically have some function that's going to return it a Java string. And um, this is the function name, and uh, you can basically see uh, the, the, the class names if, if, if you substitute the, the underscores with dots. And then you have the, the GNI environment, and then you have this object. And you could basically use the environment to generate new strings and other stuff you, you, can, you, you basically might need, want to do in, in, in C. And um, 
basically generates a C string and returns it as, an, as a new string, right? So it takes the environment and generates a new Java string and returns it. So that's what the existing JNI glue will do. Um, for for our purposes, um, we need to 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 teach the the file about um, two two functions. One is the uh, Haskell init function, which basically in, in, uh, initializes the Haskell runtime, and the other is our um, hello function we had. You, you could also have that in, in, a, in a header file and include that, but um, I find this a bit easier to write down in line. And then you write a similar function to the one we saw earlier, um, because you need to somehow call the initialization of, for, for Haskell. So you basically write this wrapper function, which um, is again in java.com. Uh, whatever main activity and again you have these two parameters and this one just does the initialization so we can initialize our SQL runtime and then we have our great uh, HS hello function which looks pretty much the same this is where this this will basically call Haskell generate the string and wrap it into a Java string or not wrap it but t turn it into Java string and return it and with all that in your glue you can basically then use your, your so this is Kotlin code, um, you can basically then uh, add, add this, this function down here, um, which is, is, is use, well, no, you don't see the full class name, but, but it's basically, if, if, if you strip the for front part of, of the function, the function you saw, it's basically just this. And um, it, it says load the native library, and these are my, my external functions in that. And the first thing you want to do if you create something, uh, if you create, uh, if if you start your application, is to initialize the the Haskell runtime. Um, because without that being initialized, you can't really use any of it. And then we basically have the string from JNI we had we had before, and this, as we saw, calls the HS hello function, and oh, the application actually shows the text, and that one came from Haskell. So um, this wasn't really complicated. But um, I hope it kind of shows how, how, how to get from nowhere um, and a small Haskell library to a running uh, Android application that shows you at least the string. You could do a lot more if you obviously wanted to. I think creativity will show. And there are a few notes I wanted to make. Um, if you want to do this for iOS, it's a bit simpler because you can just drag and drop the library in, in Xcode into your uh, linked um, libraries. And that's basically all you need to do. You don't need to edit any files. Um, but writing glue code is easier in Objective-C than Swift. At least that's my experience. Um, if you want to build it with Cabal, it is possible. It's a bit annoying. I would r recommend uh, using new build, um, but you need to have a Cabal project file. Um, and uh, that needs to have this all packages new um, Stanza and that needs to define a few uh, program options because Cabal. So, so the basic issue, which is basically part of these two 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 Cabal issues, is that um, Cabal applies flags only to local packages. So packages that basically come from Hackage and being compiled, flags are not necessarily um, applied to if you use new build. And that means if you say have a package that needs needs the um, Haskell um, to C interface precompiler HSC to HS, and you want to pass cross compile to it, Cabal won't do that for you because uh, if that package isn't local to your project. And that means that any package um, that needs this won't compile unless you start using Cabal unpack and bring that package basically local into your project or you add it as a git sub module. And um, I hope that um, we can fix that in, in 4.9.3.9 eventually and basically pass certain flags down into, into the whole branch of, of dependencies because that would probably be the, in my view, right choice. Um, and yeah, another thing you should make sure if you're using Kabbalah is make sure that your package databases are separate. If you have the same set package database for different Haskell instances, that will just um, end up in lots of shadowed uh, I haven't tried stack. Stack is just like one one level further down, and um, I know that someone someone was there wanted to use the stack. I'm not sure if they got anywhere. Um, I would fear that stack might suffer from some of the same issues. 
Um, yeah, and a user guide and tutorials are coming. So I started wor wor working on that user guide uh, beginning of this week. So there's not really much yet there. Um, and if you want to basically try the same stuff, you can download the code there uh, and just run the make file in the app folder and then build the application with Android Studio. And if you have everything set up as I showed before, it should just work. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, well, so much for that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably try to move it. I think GitHub does the right thing and just forward stuff. So, um, good catch. So, so much for m putting up the code last minute. Um, okay, thank you. And uh, question. 